everybody. Uh, my name is Anna Virke. Uh, I'll be talking about characterizing ERs asteroids using multi wavelength observation. So, hopefully, expanding your perspective on something you don't typically hear in uh, conferences of optic optical astronomy. Uh, so, as you've been hearing in the previous couple of uh, talks, we uh, characterize the size shaped composition of asteroids to understand better their formation and evolution and expanding all the way to formation of solar system. And this proper characterization is also crucial information for planetary defense in the event of attempting to collect an asteroid if one was found uh, with a significant defect. And this better interpretation of observational data can also help understand better the physical properties of, uh, of other objects such as terrestrial planets, moons, uh, most of the gas planets uh, that have been observed with these methods. Uh, so this is the uh, traditional spectrometric classification of, of asteroid. Uh, and this is actually a more recent one uh, by Gemeo et al. from 2009. More classic than the, the very traditional original one. Uh, so you have this uh, Metallic types tend to be classified here with X. Uh, you have carbonaceous asteroid here, silicaceous asteroid here, uh, and so on. So these are typically measured from uh, 0.45 micrometers to near infrared at 3.45 micrometers. Uh, but what if you could expand this all the way uh, longer wavelengths to help better characterize them? Maybe not continuous uh, with a continuous spectrum, but uh, to expand uh, the way to observe this. Uh, so the, you know that the asteroid's spectrophotometric properties depend on the mineralogy and the surface structure, uh, typically in the micrometer scale. So for example, the geometric albedos can be derived from, uh, from the absolute magnitudes, from the phase curves, so this is the phase angle uh, of, of the asteroid. These are different types of asteroid, uh, the, the taxonomic types. You have the C, M, S, E, and D types. And you can see that the shapes of these curves are slightly different. So you have this very high opposition surge for E types and uh, less narrow peak here for, for the C types. So this is also why many uh, observations are needed for, for these asteroids so you can uh, then make better phase curve fits, asteroids change place, and uh, and know from just one observation somewhere here or here what, what actually happens here, or phase, phase angle. And also in the polar metric observations, you do see difference between the different types here with phase angle from like zero to 20. And these can actually also be then uh, tied to the, the geometric albedos of, of these objects. That's how polarimetry helps you. Help you. And uh, if we think of, of light scattering in more general sense in planetary surfaces, it's a multi-parameter problem. So uh, the size -y shapes materials of, of the particles that are in the wavelength scale of the, of the observed uh, method, they uh, they all are factors in, in what you actually observe. And some of these properties are, could be uh, these kind of fractal properties. So for example, particle shapes could be similar, regardless if it's like millimeter uh, grains or, or centimeter or decimeter scale uh, sizes. But then, of course, like the material properties and at the same time very different. Also the penetration depth, like how deep into the surface the uh, your wave uh, penetrates. Uh, it also uh, depends on the wavelength. And for example, if you use long radar wavelengths, then, then the subsurface starts playing more role. Uh, so these multi-wavelength comparative analyses are, uh, well, they provide more information, of like for example, the different depths, but also they can provide constraints for each other. 
So using these different approaches is crucial for understanding better how to address the data. So this is uh, just sort of introduction to, to planetary radar. Uh, so uh, compared to optical observations, in radar you don't rely on the sunlight, you transmit your own wave. So you use these very high power, uh, typically circular polarized waves at frequency range of like two to 10 gigahertz. And this is post disk characterization. So it provides the third dimension. So with optical, you get the coordinates on the plane of sky, and this gives you the distance. So that really allows you to pin, pin down very precisely the location. That's why the astrometry after the radar observation gives you very precise information. The range resolution can be as fine as 10 meters, more typically around 600. And you also get the radial velocity, this very fine resolution of up three meters per second. And then you can also characterize like you shapes, spin properties, and so on. And with radar, of course, it's always backscattering. Uh, so you don't get this phase angle dependency, but then you get something else, which is the like higher resolution uh, imaging. And here is an example of a delay Doppler image. So you have, for example, here a range to the asteroid. This is the leading edge, which would kind of map to the center here. You have spin axis there, and you imagine like a spherical asteroid. And then you have like the, some kind of depth for it, depending on how big your asteroid is. This one has two moons here. And then here is actually like rings of Saturn, also as an example of how it works. Uh, you do have this north-south ambiguity. So for example, both of these blue dots would map in the same place in this state of floor. And you can get very high uh, resolution and uh, it actually makes it easier to make, for example. Uh, you can, and this is a Garner radar uh, polarimetry. So if you have very smooth surfaces uh, for your asteroid in the wavelength scale, and here the wavelength scale is decimeters, <laughs> micrometers. Uh, so if you have very fine grained surface, uh, you would get all of the polarization uh, back in like the opposite circular polarization compared to the transmitted circular polarization. Uh, and then if it's rougher surface, then you get some of it back in the same circular polarization. But it, for example, this is Itokawa and Beno asteroids that both have relatively rough surfaces, but you still get like relatively low SE ratios. So it's not always something you can just say that, that okay, uh, this number means. So something I'm uh, doing here is trying to improve that, that the interpretation of, of the actual surface properties of asteroids. So I'm doing these kind of fits, uh, kind of disk function fits of how the brightness changes as a function of, of the range here. Uh, so traditionally, this one over square root C is interpreted as the average slope of, of the surface facets. Imagine it's, I guess, an undulating surface. But then we know asteroid surfaces are not just undulating facets, they are covered with rubble, and then that connection is not really clear. So this is something that technically could affect also what we see in opti optical observations. So that's why it's important to compare uh, observations from different uh, methods. So this is an example of very rough grain surface uh, or very fine grain surface. So this is the theoretical center that you could, uh, you should be illuminated all the way to. Uh, so in here you can kind of uh, see the asteroid being illuminated at least halfway to, to the, the center point, whereas here you see only the, the very leading edge, so it's just a specular reflection back. And here are some more example disk functions. These are actual data, the previous one kind of modeled, so you get this like a cosine kind of uh, function that then you can do the fitting and get the parameters and that you interpret. And then you can get the dielectric properties 
derived this way, and then you can derive the densities of the asteroids uh, using, using this method. So if you would try to derive the densities of an asteroid any other way, uh, it would usually require some kind of natural or artificial object temporarily or permanently in the proximity of that. You have a binary asteroid and you that or something flying past it, but that's not very common. So density is also an indicator of the mineralogy because if you have a metallic asteroid, for example, or compare it to something that's very porous, then, then metal-rich asteroids are more dense. So here are some preliminary results from just the radar side. You can see uh, that this is the sc dosi ratio. So you can see the, for example, E-type asteroids tend to show very high sc dosi ratios. But they have uh, very quite low permittivities, whereas the, the metallic types have very high permittivities. And then the S and B, or here B type, uh, have both of these quite low. Okay. And then you compare with the optical. Like here you have geometric albedo versus the permittivity. Then you can start seeing like what kind of geometric albedos are tied to which kind of have electric permittivity. You can see some uh, trend here already uh, between the SC to OC ratio and, and the geometric albedo. So high SC OC ratio, high albedo. And get the densities derived from them. And what realistic. Uh, but then the future prospects of the, the study, uh, focusing on the last ones here. So the optical observations at small phase angles are needed to, to improve the, especially the geometric albedo estimates, uh, which can be done either through photometry or polarimetry, and uh, that could also help with increasing the number of known asteroid spectra, uh, which is also important to make these kind of uh, studies, of this, this, these statistical properties. Uh, but the idea is that, that you need both of these radar and optical observations to then do this kind of holistic uh, characterization of the asteroid. Uh, okay, if anybody has questions, I'm running very low on time here. <laughs>